Hey guys, um, trying a different method here since my last video was taken down. So I'm just going to do a voiceover because I absolutely cannot work without music in the background. So this is Grim. He is my retired show dog. I now clipper him in a pet trim. So um, the key to a good groom is to make sure your dog is completely clean, bathed, and dried 100% through. If you don't have a clean dog, you will not get a good groom. You will ruin your tools. You also want to thoroughly brush through um, every part of the dog and then use a metal comb here to comb after you brush to make sure you're going to not miss any snags, tangles, um, also any mats. They may be hiding underneath close to the skin that a brush will not pick up. So I'm just making sure I am catching all the last minute tangles here. He is notorious for getting them in between his toes since he is in a schnauzer trim. So he does have a lot of hair. So you'll see me combing his toes a little bit extra. His armpits right there behind his elbow and his underline. And again with the toes, like I said. He is really, really bad about getting some tangles in between his toes. So I always, always make sure that I get those tangles out. If you leave tangles there, they get worse and it can cause a bunch of skin problems with the dog, you know, and then tangles lead to matting. Sorry, you'll probably see me occasionally talking to him or talking to the Alexa. May even have a, a coworker or an employee walking in and out. I can't remember, it's been a couple weeks since I've done this video because my phone died right whenever I went to go finish his head groom and so I had to wait until he came back in yesterday and I finished his head and was able to complete this video to start editing. So just again, like I said, taking out all of the tangles. It's a lot of brushing, it is a lot of combing. If you do not have all of the tangles combed out and you do not have a dog that is fully brushed out with the coat properly prepped if you have a dog in a pattern like where say the legs are longer than the length of the jacket your guard combs are not going to go through those they will get hung up on tangles and matting and it will not go through combing out the beard that is an absolute must his beard does mat up pretty easily As you can see, he's really not the biggest fan of it, but he is very, very tolerable. He's a wonderful dog. Oh, um, I guess talking about the tools like I said a metal comb like I showed you is key um, that pink brush on the table is a Chris Christensen coral slicker brush they are wonderful brushes if you would like to keep your dog in a longer trim as long as you have a soft coated dog they'll work on hard coats but um, really you want to stick with a pen brush for the hard coated dogs you don't need something as you know aggressive as a long pin slicker brush like I do with him. It's just because it works for his coat. They're wonderful for brushing out. They are a little pricey. You can get them through um, groomer websites or on Amazon. So I am starting with the paw pads here. Um, I always really, really like to get the paw pads nice and neat. I use a 40 blade. I am very experienced with the 40 blade. So if you are not experienced with the 40 blade, I highly suggest not starting with one yet and use a 10 blade. Just be very careful around those toes because there's a lot of, you know, really, really sensitive thin skin in there and there's those tendons and you can nick the paw pads and in, in between those toes pretty easily if you're not careful. Just use a really, really light and soft scooping motion to get those paw pads nice and clean. It'll help prevent, you know, the dog getting anything stuck in there. Um, it helps give them extra traction on slippery floors so they're not slip it, sliding around on hair. And it's just also, it's, it's a maintenance thing. It's, it's a sanitary thing.
And also, if you will notice how I am manipulating his legs, be very careful and try to follow how I am, you know, working with his legs. You do not want to bend their legs in awkward positions because the shoulders do not come out side to side. They only move forward and backwards. So you really have to work with the dog structure or you're going to create a dog that is going to be uncomfortable. They're going to fight you and you could potentially injure your dog. And same thing with the back legs. Just pull them straight back. That was lovely. All right, so I am done with his paw pads here. So I am switching clippers. I will be moving on to his uh, sanitary area, part of his pattern that is, you know, all the underside between those two calyx, the underside of the tail, as well as the um, the penis and in between his back legs. So for this area, I am using a number 10 and a number 10 only. Um, a number 10 is the safest length to use in the sensitive sanitary areas because this sensitive thin skin can get caught between the blade teeth if you use a longer length, if you were not experienced, and you will cut a dog. So this is done with a 10 only. I will move the camera here in just a second so you can actually see the pattern from behind. Um, I start usually start with around the rectum. You never clipper over the rectum. You always go from the sides out and then shave all the way underneath the base of the tail. And then you come straight down in between those two cowlicks and you shave cowlick to cowlick. So it looks like an A um, or like a very pointed triangle. You're doing all of this with the number 10. I do it against the grain, it leaves a cleaner finish. Um, it's just what I do with all of my dogs, especially the schnauzers. You are exposing that inner thigh muscle. So you're going all the way in between those two calyx. I'm just cleaning up some stuff here, making sure that whole muscle is exposed, making sure both sides are even. And so now I am lifting his leg. It pulls that sensitive thin skin of a sanitary area really tight. I can see better to be able to get all these hairs. This is not an area you wanna leave a lot of hair. It gets nasty. It can get really tangled and really matted. And then it just causes a whole bunch of issues. All right, so here's that pattern. You can see kind of looks like an A. And then once you finish the jacket, um, the clipper work on the jacket, you go back in along those pattern lines and you blend them with thinners so it won't look so harsh and curly. He does have really thick hair, so it doesn't look very even right now. Just the same, making sure all that hair underneath near the end of his penis is all nice and clean. That hair gets nasty. If you own a male, you know what I'm talking about. Even though he is neutered, it still gets gross. Um, so I just make sure it's shaved a good two inches in front of the end of his penis so that way he doesn't pee on his hair. It doesn't get nasty, stuck, and matted. All right, so I am about to switch my blade to a 5F so I can start on his jacket work. Now, I use a 5 on him because it best complements him as an individual dog. Uh, most of my clients, my schnauzer clients, I use a seven. They prefer that length. I really don't like going shorter than a seven because under a seven would be a 10. That is very short. But I use a five on him. It gives him a little bit more of a fuller look. The longer blade length you use, the easier it is going to be to blend your pattern lines. If you use a 10 for your pattern lines, you're gonna have a hard time blending unless you are very skilled at blending with your clipper um, or your shears. So I actually do most of my blending uh, on the pattern line with my clippers, whether it be with a five, a seven, a 10. I do have some schnauzer clients that prefer the length of a 10 on their jackets. It's not my favorite thing to do. All I can do is just educate them against the risks and they still do make the decision. Unless the dog has a problem with it, then myself as a professional will tell them I refuse to do it. I advise doing a longer length for the dog's health and well-being and so forth. So here 
You see, I started with the back of his neck. I went all along his spine down to his tail. And now I am following the hair growth, following the grain of the hair down the shoulder. And it's going to go down his whole shoulder, down to his elbow. And when you skim off the bend of the elbow, you want that pattern line to come all the way down. Well, almost all the way down to the elbow. You want to leave a little bit above it to help blend that pattern line. And then the same for the rib cage. Follow that hair growth. If you go straight, like parallel to the ground against that dog's body, you are going to leave some very, very harsh clipper lines. You will not be able to get rid of them unless you go to a shorter length. So here I am going down the rib cage, and all I am doing is getting very, you know, very close to that. This very close, sorry. I'm getting very close to the underside of his rib cage, and I am just scooping the clipper off to help blend that line so I don't leave any harsh lines. The underline, the pattern line for the Schnauzer pattern is significantly lower than a lot of people realize. You are not leaving a skirt. Schnauzers do not have skirts. They have an underline to accentuate their chest. So you can see how his underline is directly under his chest. It does not come out on the sides of his chest. And here I am going down his back leg. I am exposing that thigh muscle. So you connect it from the tuck up area, which I am doing here. And you're going down that thigh, exposing that thigh muscle and leaving all the furnishing hair on the front of that leg. I am just doing some extra touching here and getting some of those long bits blending better. Rolling the skin to blend a stubborn part of that pattern line. I do that pretty often, especially on um, the rib cages. I will pull the skin from up above to roll the hair up along the actual rib cage. It makes it a little bit easier to blend. Always follow the growth, the direction of the hair. If you go against it or go sideways, you will leave clipper marks. I scoop a little bit lower than usual on him. He has a pretty straight rear. So I do that still to accentuate a little bit more angulation on him. And then if I didn't do that, I would have a lot of flyaways on the back of his legs and it's not a very attractive look. So here I am just doing his left side, just like I did the right side, as you guys saw. Make sure as best you can that you have both sides matching pretty evenly, go back and forth. Um, I am very familiar with this dog. I know where his pattern lines are, where they should be. So I don't have to go back and forth on him to check to make sure they're even. And now that it's a, you know, now that I'm on the other side, you can see his pattern line. You can see how his, his, uh, front assembly, like his shoulder and his upper arm is exposed. And you can see where the pattern line is down below or down below by his elbow. You can see the underline, how it starts at the bottom of his rib cage goes to his tuck up and then goes down along the front of that back leg. And there's his chest. You will see later on um, in the video, a better view of the front of his chest you do not leave hair on the front of that upper arm. You actually expose that entire shoulder. So the only thing you see on the front of this dog is a triangle pointing towards their throat, pointing towards the, you know the front of their neck. Um, you are only leaving a little bit of hair to accentuate their forechest right around the prosternum area. You do not leave any hair on the front of that upper arm. I'm just nitpicking, um, you know, back brushing with my hand a little bit to get some flyaways, get some longer parts. This dog has cowlicks everywhere. Um, if your dog has cowlicks, you know, just try to best get the cleanest look you can with your clipper. I constantly back brush, um, especially with my thicker coated dogs, back brush. You know, like I said, I'm 
um, moving the hair with my hand, constantly going over to make sure I have a really, really nice finish. See the better view of that, that front assembly. You can see how there's no hair on his upper arm or his shoulder. There's only hair on his fore chest. Trying to get all this situated. Sorry, just adjusting the camera so you guys can see the best. So now I am doing the top of his head. The top of their heads are used, um, done the same length as the jacket. So I go with the hair growth. And that means on the sides right here, you're leaving that triangle for the eyebrow. I go a little bit in between. He has a ton of hair, so I skimmed a little bit off that eyebrow. Work with the direction of the hair. Doing the exact same thing on the other side, working with the direction of the hair. You can see on this side, that the hair comes from the center of the head and it starts falling down and pointing towards his cheeks. So that is why if you go against the hair or sideways against the hair, you're going to leave clipper lines. You're going to have uneven lengths. So that was the top of the head. And you see how I did not go too far up to the eyebrows. You leave all of that hair um, for the eyebrows as well as for a little bit of fill behind the eyebrow. Just cleaning up all this hair. This dog has a ton of hair. Just fixing a long part where I saw on his pattern line. Measuring guard combs. I will um, use different lengths on him. I have used anywhere from a one and a half inch length on his legs um, to a one inch length on his legs. I like to keep them a little bit fuller because it makes him look more proportionate. He has a ton of bone. Uh, but not a lot of body, so I like to have him pretty proportionate. So I am using an inch and a quarter, I believe. Honestly, it's been so long, I can't remember. So I am just skimming, using that guard comb, and getting the, the furnishings on the leg. I do not go up into the tuck-up. As you can see, I'm pretty much staying around the bend of stifle, which is where my hand is at. Um, because if you go up a little too far, you're going to take off and it's going to leave a huge gap and a huge hole in that tuck up area. Do all sides of the leg, the insides, the outsides, the front and the back, which is where like the hawk is. I know you can't see guys. I'm sorry. Also, watch at how I am manipulating this dog's legs. Like I explained earlier, you want to manipulate the dog's, um, the dog's body that is the most comfortable in the way that they move naturally. So here I, am, I hold on to a foot, and I am doing the same thing with the front legs. If you see me shake his legs, I am just fluffing the hair up. It is just a gentle shake. He is more than used to it. This dog has a ton of hair, so I do several passes with a guard comb. You're not going to catch all the hair the first couple times with the guard comb. Sometimes, also, you may have to back brush, which is where you take your brush and you brush against the grain to fluff everything up nice and neat. You can also use a comb and back comb and do the same thing. 
But like I said, you would not be able to do this as efficiently as I am doing in this video if you do not have a well-prepped coat. It has to be clean, it has to be dry, it has to be fluffed out, and it has to be brushed out and combed out properly, or you will not be able to do this. And here I am just doing the other side as well to match. Once I am done with the guard comb, then I go in and scissor everything to finish. Same thing, hold the front leg by the foot, out to the front of the dog, out to the front of the dog, I believe that's what I said, um, and then just keep making passes until all of the hair is trimmed, fluff up as necessary. Alright, I am done with the guard comb. I do not use a guard comb on his underline. I scissor his underline to finish. Um, I actually switched to a 5 8 guard comb. I do a little bit of corrective grooming just to make him look more physically correct. I do the inside of his leg shorter because he is very narrow in the front. So it makes his legs look like they're spread a little bit farther. And here I am just taking hair off that elbow saves me time on scissoring that you want that flush from the outside <coughs> excuse me again on the inside of the left leg this is not necessary you can do one length all over i only do it like i said because to me it looks nicer makes him look a little more correct it's corrective grooming it is how i used to groom him for the show ring except i would hand scissor everything i would not use guard combs on this dog not for the show ring everything is hand scissored same with the inside of the back legs Making them a little bit shorter saves me time on scissoring everything shorter. Alright, so here we go. I am scissoring everything to finish. As a owner... You do not have to do this. I always recommend at least scissoring the feet round so they're nicer and neater and you don't have all that overhang. I hand scissor the whole dog, make sure I get everything nice and smooth and even and clean. This is my profession. Um, I wanna give a nice polished finished look to my clients as well as on my own show dogs. I am just scissoring his foot round. I pick his foot up, I comb everything out really well, and like you saw from the bottom, I scissor everything that overhangs on um, the bottom of his foot. And now I have it while he's standing on the table, I am still just constantly combing, scissoring everything round. 
nice and round. You don't want hair overhanging those toes and touching the floor. They're supposed to have a nice bevel. And this is if you have a dog that is in a pattern or a longer pattern like he is in. This is a short pattern for him um, because he is a retired dog. This is the link that works best for him without matting every couple weeks. And I am just scissoring the inside of that back leg. I am using my straights. Whenever you are scissoring feet, you are more than welcome to use curves. You can even use thinners. Thinners will help you um, yet learn. Some people are more comfortable with thinners. They don't leave harsh lines. I have been grooming this dog, like I said, for years. I'm used to his hair. I also do this professionally. I do this every day. And now I am doing the leg transition into the underline. That tuck up area, I'm getting everything nice and even. Make sure there's no long part sticking out. I am shaping the leg from the front. You want to shape from all sides, front, back, and inside and outside. I keep combing just so I make sure I'm getting everything trimmed nice and neat, same length. Hair likes to hide. It sticks to itself. So you want to constantly be combing to make sure you get all the hairs. And now I move to the front, see how I pick it up. I scissor everything off the bottom of the foot from the underside. I can see better once I get all the overhanging hair. I let him stand and then I scissor it round as he stands. Be very careful when you scissor the underside of their foot that you are not scissoring over the paw pads. You are scissoring around the paw pads. If you go to scissor over the paw pads, you may not be paying attention to where the middle of your shears are and you can slice a paw pad very easily. I am holding him by the elbow because this dog loves to twitch and pick up his front legs because he is very ticklish with scissoring his front legs. It is something he and I always fight about, <laughs> as you can see. He's constantly moving. I am constantly readjusting. It is very hard to scissor on a moving dog, even a dog as experienced and well-behaved as him. I had to move the camera because the position I needed to be in was blocking your view. Sorry, guys. Same thing with the front leg. You want it to appear as a column. So now I'm scissoring the back. I will scissor the front and scissor both sides, the outside and the inside. Blend that elbow up into the short 
length of the jacket, as you see here. You do not want a harsh line. And as you're looking at the dog from the front, you do not want to see this bulge hanging off of the elbow. You want to see a nice straight line from the shoulder all the way down to the leg. These softer coated dogs require a lot of scissor work because they have so much hair. So you really have to be able to work with a very patient dog. You see me griping at him for moving his legs. Yes, they are our very awkward positions you will get in because you are working with the dog being able to stand comfortably um, and you will be the one contorting into weird positions. Here I am starting his underline, which I'm sorry guys, you can't see. Um, you'll be able to see in a second when I switch. I hand scissor the underline. I do not use guard combs on the underline because I like to shape it and keep it at a certain length. If you use a guard comb, it's gonna come out all kinds of funky. I need him to stand square. He loves to inch his way backwards and uh, make his body really really short and it will make the trim very uneven just make sure you have a smooth transition from that underline into the tuck up you do not want to take off too much because then it gives the dog a very awkward appearance and they look very pinched in the tuck up area with the big hole And here I am just kind of going in at an angle to get rid of that harsh flat line, giving it more of a curved appearance, more of a natural appearance. And then I have to get the underline in between his front legs and behind that elbow. You don't want to leave it too long because when the dog moves, you'll be able to see long hair sticking out and hanging there. And now you can see his underline, how it more suits his body now that it's trimmed to a good length. It honestly could probably go a little bit shorter, um, but I'm still experimenting with his trim a little bit, changing just minor changes here and there. And I'm just making that left side match the right side that I did just a minute ago.
All right, so here I go now, scissoring the two left legs. Same exact thing I did on the right side, just comb everything down on the foot, trim the underside of the foot, everything that overhangs, put the leg down, trim the foot round, and then trim the leg into the foot. Starting with the foot leaves you a nice foundation to scissor the rest of the leg into. So I will finish this left side and then we will move on to the front of the dog.
this kind of gives you a really good example of exposing that whole shoulder. You can see how his underline comes off the bottom of his rib cage behind that elbow. And you can see where there's only hair on his fore chest. There's no hair on that front end assembly. All I did was just recenter him in the middle of the table because as I work on certain sides, he likes to creep over to the other edge. I am just shaping that fore chest with my chunkers. You don't want a lot of hair hanging off there because it's just an accentuation of the fore chest. Some dogs don't need hair because they have adequate fore chest. Some dogs like him need a lot of hair because he has absolutely zero fore chest. I just worked this with my chunkers to give a really natural finish. Bouncing the shear is not a traditional method. You're not really supposed to bounce your shear, but it is how I best achieve this natural look with this dog. He has a ton of hair. You also just want to make sure that fore chest is blended into the front legs really nice underneath. You can see how he keeps dancing those front legs. That is one thing that he and I always go back and forth about is him constantly moving those front legs. Same thing on the other side, just making it match, shaping it from a different angle. You can see as I slowly whittle away that hair, how it's getting much more, um, yeah, it's, it's a smaller shape, but the smaller it gets, the nicer it looks. You don't want this big, you know, um, Afghan front hanging off of these dogs. It is not doing anything to benefit the appearance of the dog. All right, so I had changed my clipper back to the uh, number 10 blade and I am about to do his neck and his cheeks. I do that the same way I do the rear pattern. I will be taking him off of here so that way the loop does not get in my way. Like I said, he is a very patient, very well-mannered dog. He is used to this. I can trust him off of the loop. There are also other dogs I would never do this with. If your dog is not comfortable and well-trained on a table, do not do this. Your dog will jump off your table and potentially hurt you or themselves. So what I am doing which is hard to see. I'm sorry, guys. At the end of this video, you'll be able to see it better. I am following this neck pattern. So I go from the corner of the ear to the corner of the eye. 
and I'm clipping against the grain with a number 10 blade. It gives a very clean, neat finish. And then I go all the way down that cowlick. See, corner of the ear, corner of the eye. Follow that. Do not trim too far into the beard. Then you're going to go down that cowlick. Every dog's cowlick is different. This dog, Grim, on his right side, his hair grows in different directions. So I'm constantly having to switch the direction of my clipper. On his left side, he doesn't have any cowlicks. So my arm is in the way, but I am just cleaning up that U shape down the front of his neck, making sure those sides are even. And here he is just resting. <laughs> and now I'm about to do his ears. I do his ears with a 40. I do 40 with the grain on the top. And as you can see how I am holding this ear, this applies to natural and cropped ears. Keep your four fingers underneath the ear flat and your thumb over the top. So that way the skin is not creasing, rolling, or bending in your hand. You want that ear nice and tight and flat against your hand. If that skin is not flat and tight, you will cut your dog, especially with the 40 blade. Do not use a 40 blade unless you are experienced with using one and very experienced with the clipper. Otherwise, you use a 10 blade. Do not edge an ear, whether it be natural or cropped, with a 10 blade. You will nick that ear. And ears bleed profusely, even though it is not a major injury. Those ears will bleed like crazy. So here I am going with a 40 against the hair on the inside of the ear. He is very used to this, as you can see. If anything, he will fight me to try to lay down while I do his ears. I edge his ears with the 40. Uh, it's just because I'm very experienced with this. And this dog has really nice ears. So I edge all of my ears with the 40. If you use a 10 and you want to clean up those ear edges, use straight shears and just be very careful. Hold that ear straight like I am with my fingers and scissor to the tip of the ear. Never scissor away from the tip of the ear. You're always scissoring towards the tip of the ear. So I'm just cleaning up all the little loose bits. And here I go to do the other ear the same way. 40 on top with the hair grain. 40 against the hair grain on the inside. This dog's skin is used to it. I have been doing it on him for years. That's why his ears are still nice and black. If his skin was not darkly pigmented from being suntanned, his skin would be pink. His ears are still black, even though they are bald as hell because I just shaved them with a 40 blade. This video is going to end up cutting off in just a minute and then it's going to switch to a different video and it's going to show you the same thing, the neck and cheek clipper work as well as the ears and then I will get to the scissor work for the head and neck of the dog. My phone died the first time I did this original video so I had to wait several weeks to be able to groom him again so I could finish that part of the video. All right, and here's the beginning of this second video. So I do end up doing this a little bit better so you guys can see better. So I am doing the clipper work on his neck again. Um, he did not get a full grim this time, so his jacket looks a little wild. It's because 
I did the full groom last video and now he is just getting clean up groom, which is a face, feet, and tail. So I am shaving from the corner of the ear to the corner of the eye with a tin blade against the grain. Sorry, you still can only see the side of my head. So, and then I work my way down along that cowlick down to about an inch, inch and a half above his prosternum. Make sure you get behind those ears a little bit as well. Same thing on the other side, corner of the ear to corner of the eye. See how I have to go in several different directions because this dog has so many cowlicks on the right side of his head. Again, I'm using a 10 against the grain, following down that cowlick on this side and just connecting everything. And then I will pull all of his beard forward, lift his head and connect both sides in the center. Again, still going against the grain here. And now I'm just going to clean up the shape, continue to go further down his neck. Done with that. So now I'm going to move on to shaving the ears again. I shave his ears with the 40 blade. Again, if you are not experienced with the 40 blade, please do not use one. You will very easily cut a dog. It is a very sharp, short blade. I do 40 with the hair on the outside of the ear. Keep those four fingers underneath the ear flat at all times so that skin stays flat against your hand. If it does not, you will catch skin and you will cut your dog. And again, the ears bleed like you just murdered a pig. The skin is very thin. There is a lot of capillaries in that skin and it's gonna bleed like crazy, even if it's not a major injury. I am just going all along the back side of that ear. And this goes for natural ears as well as cropped. You kind of manipulate them the exact same way. Keep four fingers flat against the ear and hold it tight and firm with your thumb. He's being a turd here. He keeps trying to turn his head into my clipper. <laughs> and all that is doing is making you guys see his beard and not his ear. So I am going again with a 40 against the grain on the inside of his ear. And then I will edge his ear with the 40 blade. I do not edge with shears. I edge with a 40 blade. I am very experienced with this. I have done this for years. Please, guys, if you are not comfortable, do not edge with a 40 blade. Use your shears. You can edge with a straight shear and always trim to the tip of the ear. Never trim away from the tip of the ear. You will catch skin and cut your dog's ear. I am very meticulous about his ears. I do not like sticky arties, long pieces, and uneven shaved ears. This dog loves having his ears messed with. He leans into me, as you can tell. Um, as a groomer, that is very uncommon. The amount of dogs I have met that actually do that, I have two. 
and one of them is him. Most dogs do not like having their ears messed with because they're not used to having them messed with. If your dog pulls and yanks for its ears, it's just a training issue. Just teach them to be patient. Teach them that it is okay. Work in small steps. You can also work with your dog on teaching them to lay down while you shave and work with their ears. So that way they're not sitting up or standing up and constantly moving. All I'm doing on the other side is the same thing. A 40 on the outside and 40 against on the inside. And then I edge the ear. Sorry for the background noise, guys. Um, that is Spicy just drinking water in her kennel. So here I am now. I'm grabbing my chunkers and I'm going to start the scissor work of the head. I will start with the eyebrows. So this is after the top of the head is clippered. You do that with the clipper work with the body. Comb everything. Make sure, you know, like at the beginning of the video, you make sure everything's brushed out, combed out. I move the eyebrows out of the way and I am trimming the eye corners. Hopefully you guys can see. You just trim directly in front of the eye, point it up. That's how I work with this side because I am right-handed. I will work in the opposite direction on the other side. Spicy. Jesus. All I am doing is thinning right in front of that eye. On my hand strip dogs, these, do these are done a little differently. I will thin a little bit, but that since the head is hand stripped, I pull all of that hair between the eyebrows. That does not get clippered, obviously, and it does not get um, thinned with thinning shears. I usually pull all of that about a week and a half, two weeks before a show. So there, I just did both eye corners. And now I will be doing the blending lines from the clipper work on the cheeks, as well as shaping the eyebrow. So I'm going from the corner of the eyeball to the corner of the ear. I am getting all that overhang. I am going straight across, and then I will move up and down here to further blend, make a nice seamless blending line. Again, I am using Foxy Roxy Chunkers. I love these shears for my thickly, my thick, soft-coated dogs. Um, I do not use these on hard-coated dogs. You will create bald spots very, very quickly. And again, blending in that clipper line from the beard, the corner of the eye to about a whisker nodule to the or the corner of the mouth. It depends on your dog. This guy has a ton of beard. This video makes his head look really long. It's not this long in reality. It's just the distortion from the video. But make sure you blend all of that really, really nicely into that clipper work for the cheek. You are giving the dog a brick-shaped head from the side as well as from the front. You do not want it to look like a peanut. You do not want it round at the top to dip in at the eyes and then round back out at the cheeks. You want it to have a nice, straight brick shape. So here I am working with the back corner of the eyebrow. The way I do my eyebrows, 
they're long, as you can see. Um, I'm not trimming them too much here because his are already shaped pretty well, but I am trimming from the outside corner of the same side on the nose to that eye, outside eye corner. I do not trim across. I do not trim from the opposite nose nostril to the outside corner. A lot of groomers will. That is how a lot of groomers are taught. I do not do that. It gives a very blunt, short, unattractive triangle eyebrow. And if that is your preference, absolutely. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy. It is your dog. Um, that is not something I prefer. That is not something that my clients prefer. A lot of people that I actually teach private lessons to, um, they struggle with eyebrows. And it's because their dog has been given short triangular eyebrows or they have accidentally trimmed them because they are unaware of how to trim them properly. So I go from the nostril on the same side of the head that I am working with to that outside corner of the same side of that eye. If you guys need an actual photo um, showing that line, I will post it in the comments if I can remember to. If I don't, someone please just ask and I will post it. Um, I didn't get to show it as much in this video because I was kind of in a rush to get him finished. Um, so they didn't have to wait too much longer on him to be finished today. It was late in the day. Again, I always groom him last in the evenings. So I am just working on that other side, blending these lines like I did on the left side, shaping that eyebrow. He keeps wanting to nose boop the camera, sorry. At this point he is tired. And here I am taking that neckline from the jacket and just blending it down. Again, using the same chunkers. I use chunkers on this dog um, or blenders because he has a ton of coat. If I use thinners, my hand would cramp because he has a ton of coat. Um, on thinner coated dogs, um, preferably hard coated dogs, absolutely use thinners. It is not gonna take as much. If you guys are not as comfortable, use thinners. Until you get comfortable, you can use whatever you are comfortable using. If you like the look, if you like the way it works for you, absolutely use it. He is so fed up with me at this point. He is tired. He wants to go home. I am just making sure I'm getting all the little nitpicky stuff. He has a ton of beard, as you can see. Um, I only trim his beard occasionally. And there we go. That is the end of the video, guys. If you have any questions, please comment. Um, feel free to send me a private message. You can ask me whatever you would like. Um, I do stay busy at the salon as well as with my personal life. So give me a couple days to respond. Um, I do not accept friend requests from people I do not know. So I just wanted to you know, point that out. I do get a lot of friend requests from you guys pretty frequently, especially every time I do post. It's nothing personal. My personal page is for my personal life. Um, but absolutely feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. Um, I am very open to helping people learn. I do teach private lessons, whether they be, um, you know, virtual or hands-on. So, Please reach out if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.